Hello everyone, we are from group 5. So today we want to present about analysis to root not taken by Robert Frost. But before that, I want to introduce our group member, Jara Angelica, Mi Astrasela, Rinca Sepalina, and Tirsa Novalita. So, happy for watching guys! The road not taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverge in a yellow wood, and sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood and looked down when as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair. And having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Tough as far that the passing there had worn them really about the same, and both that morning equally lay in leaf, no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how we led on to way, I doubt if I should ever come back, I should be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roots diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one last travel by, and that has made all the difference. Number one, what is the poem about? This poem is about life from the perspective of a young narrator who decides to seize the day and thus individual chooses the road less travel by. The expression of that runs in the poem from the first line until the last. The expression of uncertainty about choices and our natural tendency to surmise about consequence we may have to face marks central point of the poem. Whoever what stays in the mind of the people is the philosophy of life and the dilemma of making choices. Number two, who is the speaker? To whom is he speaking? The speaker in this poem is someone who is confused with the way that is rarely passed by people. Can be seen from the title of The Road Not Taken and he's speaking this poem for himself. Number 3. What kind of poem is it? The kind of poem is narrative poem. Number 3. What kind of poem is it? It is a narrative poem because this poem is a story of the poet and this poem has an expression of the poet's thoughts or feelings. Number 4. Do you find any figurative language such as metaphor, simile, personification, hyperbole, and images? Identify them. The first is a metaphor. There are many metaphors in the poem, such as A. The road in the poem is the metaphor of life. B. The fork on the road metaphorically represents the choices we make to determine the course of our lives. C. The yellow woods are the metaphor of making decisions during the hard times of a person's life. Metaphors used in this poem emphasize the importance of different decisions we make in different situations and their impacts on our lives. Next is simile. A simile is a device used to compare things with familiar things to let the readers know it easily. There is one simile used in the second stanza such as as just as fair. It shows how the poet 
has linked the road less taken to the easy way through life. And then the next is personification. In the first line, two roads diverge in a yellow wood using two types of figurative language. The first figurative language is to use personification in the phrase two roads diverge that compares a road with the path of life that must be passed by many people. In the fourth line, and look down one as far as I could using a single figurative language. The personification that goes to the phrase look down, which means to think of or treat someone or something as unimportant or not worthy of respect. In the eighth line, because it was grazy and wanted wear, which uses figurative language personification, which is where the word crazy seems as if it can be used like a clothing mark on the sentence, and wanted wear. In the eleventh line, and both that morning equally lay line uses figurative language personification which is where the word morning equally lay describes as if the morning can lie like a human. In the 14th line, yet knowing how we live on the way, which uses personification as a figurative language because in the phrase, how we live on the way, which describes as if the way know how to walk. In the 16th line, I shall be telling this Sai using figurative language personification because Sai here is described as if it can speak and is described by telling. In the 19th line, which explains that the speakers decided to take a railroad in by others. That here means the road, and in the picture, as if the road can look different because it is rarely passed by the crowd. In the 20th line, and that has made all the difference using the figurative language personification, which is the word that describes the sentence, I took the one. And the next is hyperbole. On the 15th line, I doubt if I should ever come back, that uses hyperbole as a figurative language, where in the word ever is used as a sign and on the 17th line some marriage and age hand in this sentence using the figurative language hyperbole in the sentence describes past memories as if they could be returned while that is impossible imagery Imagery is used to make the readers feel things through their five senses. The poet has used images of the sense of sight such as leaves and yellow woods. These images help readers to actually perceive things they are reading. The image of the road help readers to visualize the road, providing a navigation route to the traveler. Number 5 do you find any symbols? Explain them. A. Two roads diverge in a yellow wood. The line two roads diverge in a yellow wood refers to the divergent paths the solitary narrator encounters on his autumnal journey, which represent the difficult choices we must often make alone. As the weather cools, you will find few others traveling in an autumn wood. 
highlighting the loneliness of the narrator in his decision. B. Because it was crazy and wanted wear. The line, because it was crazy and wanted wear, refers to the path the narrator eventually chooses. Not even fast growing grass has the time to take root on a frequently traveled path. But a less frequently traveled path is overgrown from lack of use. Representing a desire for individuality and adventure and a revolt against the more conventional, much travel road. The road symbolizes our life. 6. Is there any sound patterns identify them? This poem is follow an a B A A B pattern of N rhymes. In the first stanza, for example, would, stood, and could are the A rhymes, while both and growth are the B rhymes. The poem also uses alliteration or putting words beginning with the same consonant in close proximity. For example, in wanted wear and lay or in leaves. The stress falls on the second syllable in each foot or pair of beats, but since each line has only nine syllables, the stress and ends up falling on the rim at the end of the line, adding even more emphasis to it. The tone of Robert Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken, can perhaps be best described by word nostalgia. It means looking back on the past with sentimental emotions. There are assonance in the poem, the sound of a and O in quick succession in talk as far that the passing and in somewhere a guess and a guess hinge consonants repetition of consonant zone D in to root diverging in yellow wood and T sound in to as far as the passing there Number 7. What is the theme of the poem? The theme of the poem is that human beings are defined by the choices they face and the choices they make. So, that's all from our group. Thank you for your attention guys.